Hey guys, it's Kevin Review for this week's episode of American Horror Story Double Feature. Of course, this is still part one Red Tide, uh, episode three Thirst. And guys, I was actually really excited uh, for this episode. The premiere of Double Feature, like I said, is probably one of the more intriguing ones we've had in quite a bit. There was a lot of interesting ideas that it really did set up, and I wasn't entirely sure where this was really going to go after the events of last week, and... I feel like this episode really gave us a better sense of what this season is really going to be, and I have to say, if it's any indication of what we're going to get, I am very much still on board, because I really loved this episode a lot. It was twisted, it was crazy, it went in some really unexpected directions that I was not um, thinking they would go in this early, but I'm very interested in seeing where it does end up going from here, because I think we are setting the stage for what might just be their most fucked up season yet, but I do just want to get into right now, of course... So I think the first thing I really do want to get into is what the hell is going on with Alma? Because, we, of course, you know, we met Alma's character in, in the first two episodes, and she seemed like just, uh, you know, this very passionate little girl that wanted to become a really good violinist. This was something that was very important to her. Um, and then, seemingly, she took the pill and started, like, lashing out at her mother, eating roadkill. This episode kind of suggests, though, that maybe she's always been that way. Uh, with the way that Alma acts in this episode, I mean, you can see that there is a very clear distinction between the way Alma's reacting to the pill and the way that Harry's reacting to the pill, because... Harry seems to already be getting used to it. Like, he understands, you know, what really needs to be done here. He gets the side effects. He's pretty much used to it. And But Alma, on the other hand, wants it, like, always like she's always craving blood she's always craving you know some sort of um you know she she's always hungry in that way and i think it's really kind of hinting at the fact that alma is way more demented than we really thought she was i mean especially the scene where she's in the car with harry and you know he's talking to her because he really wants to provide for his daughter and you see that he really does take this opportunity to try to make things better with her because obviously he's not really, we, we get the sense that these two are not in the greatest terms, he hasn't been the greatest father for her, and he really wants to, like, right that wrong, so he decides to use this as a way to kind of get closer to her, um, and so they tell Doris that, you know, they're going on this, like, excursion to, uh, you know, that, that they're going on this, oh, we're to New York, and that they're gonna leave P-Town. In reality, they're very much staying at P-Town, because this is pretty much, you know, where they need to be in order to continue doing what they're doing, and, you know, constantly getting this drug, because it, I don't think it's sold elsewhere, at least we don't think it is, um, but when they're in that car and she's talking about how she wants to be perfect and how she literally wishes everyone else could just disappear, I was like, what the hell is going on with her? Like, her character is so intriguing me. And can I just say, Ryan Kira Armstrong is amazing in this role. I love what she's doing here. She is really creeping me the fuck out in a way that American Horror Story characters haven't really done in a while. I really feel like by the end of this season, Alma is going to... To be like a household name in terms of uh just uh vil you know villains in American Horror Story. I don't know if she's gonna be like the outright villain because there's definitely you know some more sinister figures in this show, but I think she's definitely going to be you know one of the most difficult uh presences and, and probably one of the most sinister ones um on this show for sure. I'm I'm very interested in seeing what really ends up going down there, you know, with her constantly getting this craving to the point where her dad has to end up in this really weird like sex crime thing that's going on I didn't know what was going on there where you know it seemed like it's this couple they're just trying to have sex and it seems like you know everything's going fine but then it turns out no this is actually some like really weird like BDSM sort of thing where the husband uh, where, where basically the, the girl takes pleasure in, like, watching her husband or boyfriend or whatever he is, um, like, you know, fuck other people, and he's, like, about to do that to Harry, and Harry's, like, bound and gagged, but he still, like, he gets in there, and they're asking him to take the pill, and then he just fucking 
fucking like he he just fucking like tears their their guts out like when he just like goes in to like their jugular i mean that's the kind of stuff that like i want to see on this season i really like what they're doing in terms of these killings i think they're honestly really creative it's not and i feel like it's something that could get really repetitive but when you have something like this where it's like you know this really weird sort of um business that's going on you know i this this strange organization whatever the hell harry was uh stuck in you know that's the way you keep this idea fresh that's how you can keep this exciting and i i so i really liked what they ended up doing with that scene but you can already see this is really complicating things for uh austin and sarah they don't like the fact that alma's involved with this because children aren't supposed to be and like harry said before you know this is very unnatural for alma she's not even fully developed yet he's not sure if this is going to affect her growth and so i i'm very interested in seeing what's really going to happen to alma what are the side effects that's going to affect her is she actually talented because i kind of get the sense that she's not um because remember, she was not a good violinist before. Like, she was really struggling, and now all of a sudden she's, like, amazing at it. And Harry is, like, really encouraging her that she's amazing and that she's going to, you know, uh, be in all these sold-out shows and things like that. Um, but I kind of feel like she's going to end up a pale person. I really do. Um, because I, I just don't think that Alma... Um, is as talented as we think she is, and I'm interested in seeing if that is the case, because if that's where they're heading, this could be a really interesting story uh, for where they do end up going with her, but we can see that these two are very disgruntled at the fact that uh, Harry has, you know, given these pills to his daughter, or given them, you know, had not been able to hide them from her, has made them, you know, in plain sight that she's aware of these because she's not supposed to be so you can see that that's really kind of complicating things but then to add insult to injury you get to the end of this episode where Alma is literally just like going rogue and eating whoever comes to her pretty much you know you have Chief Burleson who I'm not gonna lie I'm not gonna miss much. Uh, I like Adina Porter a lot. I think that she's a really strong actress, but I was not really feeling her in this role. I really wasn't. I think she was honestly kind of miscast here. I get it that she's supposed to be, like, the moral compass. I get it that she's supposed to be, like, the one character that is trying to help people. Um... But I just was not really that into her, her character. So when Alma ended up eating her, I was like, honestly, I'm not going to miss her much. But I was not expecting for her to die. That being said, like, I was not expecting for her to go this early. Because usually in American Horror Story, the character that's the moral compass sticks around until at least the half point of the season. And we're not even close to there yet. So the fact that she's already, like, been the dust, uh, I was not expecting. And I, I really liked where that's going because... Because it's really going to throw things in uncharted territory now. I mean, I don't really know how Harry's going to be able to control Alma. What's this really going to do for them? And also, what's going on with Doris? Because Doris seems to be freaking out. She's so worried that Alma has, like, Lyme disease or something like that. I really think they're hinting at the fact that, like, Alma's some sort of, like, uh, that, that, like, Doris is some sort of, like, hypochondriac or something like that. Or maybe there's, like, something that she was afflicted with or someone she knew was afflicted with and it's kind of, like, scared her off since then. Um, but we can really see this is affecting her in a big way. I'm not entirely sure if she's still going to take the pill, um, because I think she's got a lot more baggage that she's dealing with that has nothing to do with the pills. So I'm excited to, you know, I'm very interested in diving deeper into what's really going on with her. But like I said, a lot of interesting stuff going on when it comes to the Harry and Alma dynamic. I really like where they're heading with that a lot. I think it's a very twisted sort of father-daughter story, um, but I think it is the right kind of story for this season and I'm, I'm interested in seeing where they really do go with that however for me the most interesting stuff in this episode besides Alma was everything going on with Ursula who can I just say for me right now I know we're only three episodes in this is easily the best role Leslie Grossman has had on the show so far uh look I really liked her in 1984 I thought that she really got to show her range and how good she can be as these really like evil characters but what I think works so well about Ursula is that it's kind of an amalgamation of every character Grossman has played she's very cynical she's very much 
she can be comedic relief, but I feel like it's done with a much more cynical attitude because Ursula just doesn't give a fuck. The perfect example is when, you know, she arrives at the house and she's asking Harry if something's okay with Doris, and, you know, if every if something's wrong with Doris, and then immediately says, like, yeah, I, I would hope not because I'm not really here for, like, emotional shit. And I was like, yeah, that's, I mean, that's exactly the kind of character that you need here. She really is just so no-nonsense, and I really like where they're heading with her because she arrives to uh, P-Town. At first, we think she's just there to sort of gain inspiration. She knows that something is causing Harry to write in a way that he never has before. She's never seen this good of writing for him. She's never seen him, you know... Um, she, she's never seen him have this much, um, you know, inspiration, uh, deliver this much as a writer. She's never seen him churn out this much good work, and so she really wants to see what does it. He's gotten another offer now with Quinn Tarantino, which I really do think where this is headed is that he's just gonna keep getting all of these offers, and it's just gonna be, like, too good to be true after a while, so I'm interested in seeing what's gonna happen there, but the larger thing with Ursula is that she goes over to the bar because Harry does recommend her to go to the muse and I love when she just calls out Austin and Sarah like she hates the fact that they're singing she's like I'm not here uh, I'm just trying to have like a nice meal and things like that I love when she just straight out insults them but you can see that they really don't want much to do with her after this you know they are very insulted by what's going on but She's also very intrigued by Mickey. As we know, Mickey himself is also a writer. He's trying to make it big uh, within the world, and he really thinks that these pills could really help him with that. And that's something that, you know, he is very much starting to go against the wishes of, of Karen. Even though Karen was very adamant about the fact that, like, we shouldn't take these, uh, he's doing it anyway. And so she wants to know, you know, does the pills have any effect into what he's doing? And so I really enjoyed the scenes where, you know, at first she thinks he's trying to hit on her, but it seems like he's just trying to, you know, get more uh, distribution of the pills. He's trying to acquire more because it's just not enough for him at the moment you know he wants to keep writing he wants to be uh, amazing at what he does and we still don't know you know is he actually talented or is it one of those things where he thinks he's talented and then he's going to turn into a pale person we're not entirely sure uh, what's going to end up happening there, but I'm interested in seeing where the whole dynamic with Mickey and Ursula goes, especially now that Ursula is pretty much wanting to, like, sponsor uh, these pills. You know, she wants to basically uh, come into contact with the chemist, who we do find out who is behind these. It's this character known as the chemist that Angelica Ross is playing, but this character is very different from what we saw her play in 1984. This character is ruthless, she is cutthroat, and she does not like the fact that these pills are being widely distributed. This was supposed to be a very private thing. She only wanted a certain amount of people to have them, and the fact that now Ursula and Mickey are now aware of what's going on, and then... Also, Harry, Doris, and Alma, she just wants them all killed. And so now we see Austin and Sarah in a very different light, I think, because while they're very annoyed by what's going on with Harry and the fact that he has, in fact, um, you know, given these pills to Alma... Now it seems more like it's because they have a higher up. They are basically, you know, subservient to the chemist. They do what she tells them to do. Like, they've sort of gone around and distributed this, and she doesn't really like the fact that that's gone down, so... I don't really know what's going to happen here. Are they going to just straight up kill, um, you know, Harry, Alma, and Doris? Because we know that Sarah wants um, Mickey killed. Like, that's something that she needs to, you know, she needs to make sure that uh, Ursula's dead. She doesn't really care what happens there. It also seems like Mickey and um, Sarah, like, they have some sort of past. We I know next week is going to be, like, a flashbacks episode, so I think we're going to find out more of what's going on there, but I'm interested in seeing you know what's really going down what is the relationship between mickey and, and sarah how do they really know each other 
And also, where is this really gonna go? Because, again, it seems like Austin and Sarah are being demanded by the chemist, but, like, are they gonna follow her orders? Do they have their own sort of agenda? I'm not really sure what's gonna happen. Obviously, we know that Sarah wants Ursula killed because of, you know, what Ursula said, and also the fact that Ursula knows what's going on, but I'm also under the impression that Ursula definitely knows more than she's letting on. I don't think that she came to P-Town just by... A random coincidence. I think there's there's definitely more going on here, and I'm also I also feel like a lot of the celebrities uh, have also you know taken this drug before. Like I feel like Quentin Tarantino in like uh, the note he gave to um, you know in, in like the message that he gave to uh, Harry kind of hinted at the fact that he's also like you know um, he he's also like consumed these pills before. So I don't really know where that's gonna go, but I'm very excited to see what ends up happening there and then the fact that mickey is now killing people you can see this is having an effect on him he knows that he's not a killer and i don't really think he likes the fact that this is a side effect and i don't know what this is really going to do to him so that's something else i'm very interested in so but getting more into the technical stuff in this episode i mean the way this episode was directed i thought was really well done there was a sense of unpredictability throughout it but again that suspenseful sort of eerie feeling it's still very much there they haven't really been legitimately unnerving like this in a while and i think that's something that is really good about this season is that i am legitimately tense while watching this season you know when harry is talking to alma in that restaurant i was really creeped out by that and i i really like that a lot american horror story like i said i feel like in recent seasons has never really been that scary it's got a lot more campier but because of the fact they've really kind of scaled back on that and they're now down to like the main essentials I, I think it's a lot more effective in that way so I really did enjoy a lot of the directing here the writing also continues to be really clever I'm very interested in you know what this is really getting at with the idea of talent and the idea of talent not being something that is you know naturally given to you it's something that you have to uh, excel at by taking these pills. You know, you're born with the talent and those people that aren't uh, born with it, you know, what does it really mean for them? I think there's a lot of interesting ideas that they're doing there. The cinematography as well, the way this episode was constructed, I thought was really well done, especially the scene with Harry and that really fucked up business that he was in. Um, I, I really love the way that whole thing was filmed, almost like a snuff film of sorts. I, I really enjoyed that scene. I, I really enjoyed the way that scene was filmed a lot. Um, Matt Quayle also is just doing such an amazing job with the score this season. I, I really like the way that he is composing everything. Um, I think that that is definitely a big standout of this season. Really, I mean, there's a lot of things to be excited for here. What's really going on with Alma? I feel like there's definitely something more going on that we don't really know about. Uh, are Austin and Sarah going to follow, you know, the chemist orders, or are they going to do their own thing? I'm not entirely sure what's going to end up happening there. Uh, you know, what's going to happen with Doris? Uh, what, what's, what's really going on with her? Like, why is she so obsessed with the Lyme disease and things like that? I, I'm very interested in seeing what's going on there. And then also, of course, you know, where is this all really headed? Um, I, that's something else that I think we're still not not entirely sure what's going to happen moving forward and I'm excited to see you know what's really going down there why did the chemist make these in the first place um I, I think that's more stuff that we are going to dive deeper into but like I said guys this was another really strong episode for me I really do like where the season is headed overall and I really do hope they're able to keep up the momentum here because I really do think this is definitely the best American Horror Story has been in quite a bit so I'm definitely going to give this episode American Horror Story double feature episode three thirst in a minus we're over guys in my review this week's episode of american horror story double feature the most guys saw this episode overall left your thoughts and it will see you guys in my next video and we'll see you guys for that okay bye